Welcome to the Kara's Cares Digital Show and Podcast. I'm Kara Sundlin, and this is where we explore the cutting edge of wellness. Today's episode is sponsored by the Center for Advanced Reproductive Services. And when it comes to wellness, is there anything more important than sleep? It's actually the foundation for just about everything, which is why so many of us get frustrated, especially since the pandemic. Perhaps we've had trouble falling asleep or staying asleep, or maybe you've got a baby in the house. Well, my guest, Ingrid Pruer, is a holistic sleep coach, and she is here to help us get some rest. Welcome, Ingrid. Hi, Kara, how are you? I'm so excited to be here, especially to talk about sleep and how people can improve their sleep. Yes, March is actually Sleep Awareness Month, and unfortunately, a lot of us are just aware that we're not getting enough of it. Um, I know you've got a lot of tips, but let's start with the basics. I used to, I'll tell you my own personal feeling, and I feel like a lot of folks have had this. I used to be the best sleeper, such a deep sleeper, nothing woke me up. Now it takes me forever to fall asleep. I feel like I have more nights with insomnia. I mean, a lot of people are just finding like they're not sure why their sleep isn't working the way it used to. Yeah, and I find that especially now with a lot of the stress that we've seen happen in the world in the past two years, it's kind of get hard to get back to the norm of how do I improve my sleep? So one of the things that you can do if you're not doing so already is making sure that you're getting an adequate amount of sleep, like six to eight hours of rest each night. The research shows it that the more sleep you can get anywhere from that six to eight hour, the better it is for your body for your skin, for how your body functions on a daily basis, right? So that you can make the best choices throughout your day. Everything from what you're eating to minimizing the amount of stress you're under. So for sure, 68 hours of sleep. Yeah. The second one is you wanna make sure that the climate in your bedroom is conducive to sleep because oftentimes what we find is that we're tossing and turning because we're too cold or we're too hot. Right, so 68 to 72 degrees is the ideal temperature for imperative blissful sleep is what I like to call it, right? Um, so so are you getting heat? enough sleep this way? <laughs> so if your room, you know, in the winter here, some of us, you know, are using other ways to keep things warm. We're putting tons of blankets on because you're cold at first, but you're saying our body temp actually drops by three degrees. So just one thing to check, if, if you're too hot, that would prevent you perhaps from sleeping well? Right, if you're too hot, you're sweating, you're uncomfortable. So you wanna be on top of, you wanna sleep on materials that are conducive to sleep. One of them is definitely anything that's silk, right? You wanna be laying on materials that are gonna be breathable, that are gonna allow you to not overheat because that becomes a problem. You're gonna get uncomfortable. The pajamas that you're wearing, again, one of my favorite materials is absolutely silk. And that's why I love, but just to give you an example, of the Juvea silk and silver pillow. Just the material itself is very silky smooth, and that's what you wanna be laying on. You want something that's not gonna overheat you. So the bedding is extremely important, something that's buoyant, that's gonna protect your neck, of course. Yeah. So, and if you don't have that, you're more likely to be tossing and turning all night long and be completely uncomfortable, which is not the way to go especially if you're trying to improve your sleep. Right, right. And, and you know, a lot of people might think silk is going to be hot or silk is not the right thing, but you're actually saying it is breathable, it's antimicrobial, it's even great if you're suffering from acne or things like that. So something right. to think or about. As, yeah, and seasonal allergies, which is right around the corner, right? Right. So you want to make sure that if it's something like the silk and silver, the silver in itself helps boost up your immune system and allows for less dust mite issues as well as helping clear your respiratory system, which is imperative for a blissful sleep. So let's talk about trying to fall asleep. I know you're a big uh, fan of essential oils, um, and some might be thinking, oh, how's that really going to help me? But you see that it can really help people? Absolutely. It can actually change you at a cellular level. So as you can see, I have my diffuser. I have it in every single room. So a couple of the different oils that I love to diffuse are lavender, and magnolia because they're high in linenol content, right? So it's that aromatic compound that will get us into that relaxed state and who doesn't want that? So is that's that part of my favorite things to do in order to kind of bring everyone into a calm state. So, so that's the reason it works is because it helps you relax. Does I've always been curious because I know that people have success with essential oils. Is it just the relaxed state or is there something about them that actually helps you produce melatonin? I, I know some people have talked about putting melatonin somehow in a diffuser. 
So that's interesting. I have not tried pulling melatonin into a diffuser as of yet, but what I can tell you what essential oils do is that you're taking it through your sinus cavity, right? So when you do that, it is actually going into your respiratory system and making it through every single cell of your body within 20 minutes. Now, not all essential oils are exactly the same. So please be mindful of like the oils that you are using because they're not, a lot of them are, or have fillers in them, which would not be good for your respiratory system. So keep in mind, essential oils can be used, but they need to be used in a manner where you understand the quality of the oil that you have in hand, because they're not all the same. Okay, and what about certain things to eat before we go to sleep? What can help us really wind down and maybe fall asleep easier? So you're talking about, well, a couple of things, right? I don't want us to focus so much on what you can do right before sleep, but what can you do all day? What are the healthy choices of foods that you can make? So you want a lot of water-based foods, right? Our largest organ is our skin. So we wanna make sure that we're nourishing as much as possible. Watermelon, cucumbers, strawberries, peaches. These are all the things that we can have throughout the day that will help us get into, one, it's gonna give us enough water in our body. We need about half our weight in ounces of water daily to flush out toxins. So incorporating water-based foods like these will help us remove the toxins, which is going to happen throughout the night, right? Increase blood flow so that we can kind of get rid of these dark circles and the puffy eyes so that we can get better rest. So it is a real thing, beauty sleep. We get the dark circles because we don't have the increased blood flow we need when we're not sleeping well? Absolutely, there's no way to get around it. So definitely increasing your sleep, making it a priority is the way to go to have more beauty, right? In the morning, so. <laughs> right, right. Why not? <laughs> you know, I know that you're- Why not make sleep in <laughs> You're actually, you have another title and that's the baby sleep whisperer. And, and, you know, I have two kids myself. They're sleeping through the night now. They're, you know, 12 and 15, but I, I always give people, it's actually the, the baby whisperer book and, and anything I can when, when it's a baby gift, I give them a, a sleep sheep and white noise and anything to help the mom get more Aww. sleep. Um, but I know you have some tips. People have actually used you and you've figured it out for all the new parents out there who are struggling. Talk about trying to get more sleep with a new baby? So one of the things, just like adults, it's important to make sure that you're making sleep a priority, right? Helping a child become a blissful sleeper is not something that you can do part-time. So you need to kind of go all in, make sure you're clearing your schedule for like the next three to four weeks to help them sleep better. The other is to log. I have all of my clients log their information, everything from you know, when they're feeding the child, changing diapers, what the child's mood is, all of this information will shed light as to where the gaps are. Most often, the reason why kids don't sleep well is because their sleep schedule might be off, they're not eating enough, or the parents are taking them out a little too, too often, right? So they're getting used to movement sleep and not having enough time to acclimate to their sleep environment and not having enough practice, right? So then the parents find themselves rocking the child to sleep, putting them in cars, driving. I mean, I've heard every story out there at this point because I've worked with thousands of families all over the world. And it's I've had families that have driven all the way to Rhode Island <laughs> and back just to help their baby sleep better. I hope you've never had to go through that. No, no, no. I, I, I do, I did have one of my babies really only wanted to sleep in the car seat and for a period of time the pediatrician gave us the uh okay he's like just it's okay, okay. put the car seat in the crib <laughs> eventually we're gonna get him to the crib but if he wants to be in the car <laughs> so we did that for a few weeks but uh, routine uh, for other new parents out there and then we'll get back to the rest of us but the routine's really important i remember uh working with a doula who said you know making sure we're doing the same thing in the order as much as possible at night like you know the bath and the calming and it just just like us i guess we need good sleep hygiene we need to tell our body we're about to go to sleep absolutely so the routine doesn't have to be very elaborate it can be very simple but what we want to focus on is that we're giving child, a child the cues that sleep is coming. So everything from, you know, lowering the lights around the house to bringing them into their sleep environment, pulling down the shades, putting on the white noise. The white noise helps mask the outside noise. What happens when a child wakes up when they've been sleeping? Oftentimes it's because their brain has been alerted.
waking. So then the way you put your child down to sleep is the way they expect to go back to sleep every time they wake. And Messi just agreed with me. Yes, so yes. That's what happens. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes the dogs, right? And white noise and all that. Now, I, I want to go back. You know, I think um, I know a lot of people who are also just finding whether it be stress or they reach a little older, 40s, 50s, middle age, women, it could be hormonal changes, but all of a sudden they're just not sleeping well. Do you recommend that they take melatonin? I mean, people want to try and do things aside from um, taking sleeping pills. Like what can they do ahead of time? So melatonin is one of those that I would say it's best not to take it over the counter. You want to make sure that you've spoken to your healthcare provider because it is a synthetic hormone. Now, naturally, we reproduce melatonin. So when we want to get to the point of understanding why do we need to take melatonin, is our body not producing it? And there are tests that can be run by your healthcare provider that would allow you to know if that's actually the case. Because it is a synthetic hormone, especially the ones that you're buying at a, at a, you know, at a pharmacy, that you don't just want to be taking that just to take it. Yeah, right, every now and then, I guess, if it's jet lag. First, it could be a, it's a hormone disruptor, potentially. So you don't want to just be taking it just to take it. Okay, right. And and just for those who are listening around here, I know we have Dr. Uh, Artemis Morris, who's also in Connecticut, but sees people worldwide. And she's a naturopath, and I know she helps a lot of people with the right things to take. But so what you're saying is ask those things. Um, and, and, and certain teas, right? Uh, herbal teas can, people think it's just tea, but even the active drinking tea or certain teas like chamomile, kava, um, valerian, I mean, there's different experiments that people can try and the teas can really help people, right? Absolutely. So chamomile tea is one of the you know most common ones. There's lavender, honey that you can put into your tea. People drink milk so, or, and non-dairy milk and they warm up the milk and it brings them like a sense of calmness that if, if it's not, you know, if you want to create more calmness in your life, do the things that will help minimize the clutter in your mind. And something like holding onto a cup of tea could do it just, could do just exactly what it's supposed to do, which is bring you a little to a more centered state, warm you up inside, which is what you need in order to increase naturally the melatonin in your body as well as getting a really good hardcore laugh. Most people don't know that belly laughing at night, making yourself crack up so much can actually increase the melatonin in your body. Cool. Just like taking a beautiful warm shower uh, or bath, make it a lab beautiful bath where you're putting essential oils and you know, um, getting into Epsom salt, will, which will help release the toxins in your body as well. Um, that's other ritual, another ritual that you can include in your evening routine that will help produce more melatonin. The change in temperature from the shower or bath to your sleep environment, that alone will help increase the melatonin to get you into that sleepy state. And just like the babies, right? It tells your body it's coming if we can start doing. I mean, a, a lot of us have heard this, but how bad is it if you're looking at screens before you're going to bed trying to fall asleep? And I guess it would depend on what you're watching on that screen. Of course, um, it definitely depends what you're watching, but the main thing with why technology is not necessarily the best right before sleep, it depends on how much technology you've even accumulated throughout the day, right? Because it's the, we want to block the blue light exposure. The more light, so the more exposure we have to blue light, the less our body's going to pr produce melatonin. So something simple as getting blue light blocking glasses for all of those uh, all of those people out there who are like, I need my TV before I go to sleep, or I need to read from my Kindle. Buy blue light blocking glasses. You can either get the clear lens or the amber colored lens. Um, the amber colored lens are really the ones that are meant to be used at night because they help minimize the amount of blue light exposure. The clear lens is meant to be used throughout the day if you're someone who sits in front of the computer working all day, and then you add TV and your phone at night. So you want to have these tools near you um, so that you could just grab them and use them and not disrupt your sleep. 
And I know you have a lot of (laughs) I know you have a lot of resources. I've checked out your website. Whether you're the person who needs some help, you do help families if you've got a baby in the house, and it's always good to have an expert uh, (laughs) because you're like, I'm too tired to figure this out. Uh, But you also have links to more information, including the kind of essential oils that you recommend, just so people are getting pure ones. Uh, Good advice there. You don't want to just buy them at any gas station or drugstore because some of them are not so great. So uh, it's IngridBabysleepWhisperer.com. Lots of resources there. And we can just hope that all of us can pay attention to getting more rest because certainly we feel a lot better. And you can even lose weight, right? I mean, part of us are trying, people are trying to lose weight. If you're not sleeping well, it's harder to lose weight. Is that true? Absolutely. So let's think about what happens all day long, right? You're accumulating information. There's emotional stress that's taking place throughout the day. And if you don't have or give yourself the opportunity to sleep well, to release those all of those emotions, what you're doing is jamming up, let's say your file cabinet where you're depositing all these emotions. So of course your your body's going to be in a stress mode. It's not gonna burn the calories the way you would like them to. Mm -hmm. So- And that's a big problem for all of us. In order to improve your health overall, for sure. It's the foundation of sleep, like you were saying. That's literally like my tagline. Yes. (laughs) No, I mean. It's free. Why not do it? It's totally free. I've interviewed so many doctors doing Kara's Cures over more than a decade now. And they'll all say whatever discipline they come from, conventional, functional, natural, sleep is my drug of choice. Let's try and get some sleep first because so much of our body is regulated and, and, and the stress, the cortisol hormone goes up. That makes you whole on to fat there's all kinds of reasons we need sleep so um uh, I, I'll, I'll leave it with this if someone's telling you i don't really need sleep i'm fine or four or five hours could that ever be true i have not really found that to be the case right so i my next question is well how is your health overall what medications are you on it's very interesting to hear the variety of answers a lot of people can acknowledge that they don't sleep well and they just don't think that they really have the time to fix this situation because they think it's too much trouble. But I'm like, what you're doing is really setting yourself up to have bigger you know, health challenges later on when it's something that you can choose, voluntarily make it a priority to sleep well, right? Yeah. And it's free, why not do it? Uh- Last question. There's a lot of debate if we should keep daylight savings time, daylight saving time, I should say, everywhere all year long. And I think a lot of us say, hey, that's great. Is there any reason we should be concerned about sleep or you're okay with it either way? I'm actually of the mindset of like, why do we even need it? It's not necessary anymore. At one point, it was for the farmers, right? That's really why daylight savings time was created. And since then, I mean, it's, it's not something we need at this point. It's very disruptive and it stresses people out a lot because especially for moms, they're more like, Oh my goodness. Now my child's going to wake up an hour earlier. What am I going to do? And it really is more disruptive than helpful. Yeah. Because we but are now they just, make not it, farmers. There's now not they want to make it permanent. Anymore, unfortunately. So we don't have that same need like we used to before there was a reason now there's no purpose right <laughs> now it's just disruptor <laughs> well we'll have to see what happened i know that the senate for the first time ever votes unanimously that we're going to keep it uh, we'll see what the house says but i guess at least if we keep something all year long our body won't be it won't be as natural but it w- we, we won't get so disrupted if we're changing so Maybe they'll just, uh, yeah. We'll have to see what happens so with that. Hopefully, it comes to an agreement of somehow, of some sort. <laughs> so, <laughs> I want to change it twice. We need to change it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I know it is. It's, I'm still trying to adjust. But March is um, Sleep Awareness Month, and that's one of the reasons is because we're all going through that adjustment. But I want to encourage everyone to check out your website, IngridBabysleepWhisper.com, and let's all make sleep a priority because, as you've said, it is the foundation for everything. So, thanks for being with us, Ingrid. Oh, thanks for having me, Kara. It was great to see you again. Great to see you. You can find more information on the cutting edge of wellness right here on Kara's Cures. Check out the other episodes on WFSB Plus or listen to the Kara's Cures podcast on iTunes or wherever your favorite place is to get a podcast. You can also follow me on social media. I post this content there at Kara Sundlin and join the Kara's Cures Facebook group. Have a great day, everyone. Be well.